After feathered wear, our next problem becomes cupping wear. Now, in my experience on trucks, cupping tends to come from six major items. One, inflation. Well, everybody knows about that. Two is balance. Well, once again, we know about that. Three is not getting the tire mounted straight on the rim, and your tire people can show you about that. If it's not straight, the tire wiggles down the road and it'll cup. Same problem if the rim is bent. Tire wiggles down the road and it'll cup. Now, if we take these four items out, which are common knowledge, everybody knows about those, the two that are left cause me most of my problems. Number one is feathered wear. The stuff we've just been talking about, sliding a tire sideways as it goes down the road. Now, if you take a rubber tire, put 6,000 pounds of weight on a steer axle, and slide it sideways down the road on asphalt or concrete, do you think the tire slides smooth or does it chatter? It'll chatter and it'll cup. So when you find feathered wear on a tire and cupping on the leading rib, the cupping came from the feathering. And if 70% of the trucks have feathered wear on the tires, 70% are going to get cut. So it's a major problem. But let's say we've got a vehicle that doesn't have feathered wear. The balance is good, the rim's mounted, the tire's mounted straight, inflation's right, and we still got some cupping. That leads us to a loose component. The loose component that a lot of people blame is the kingpin. But my experience is the kingpin is a very small part of it. The biggest problem I have is the wheel bearing. Wheel bearing loose on a steer tire, we have no feathered wear, we have cupping on one shoulder or the other or both, or sometimes it'll alternate around the tires it rotates. And later in its life it'll go into a diagonal white. This is a classic loose wheel bearing on a steer axle. And bearings are easy to adjust and most of them are loose. If you have loose wheel bearings on a dual wheel, it'll show up as cupping on the inside edge of the inside tire. It's a very common problem to see in the field all the time on trailers and drive axles. These are our tire wear issues. Feathered wear caused by toe and drive axle alignment. Cupping wear, which can come from the, the misalignment of drives and toe, and the loose components. We get past these, this tends to solve about 95-98% of the issues most of the fleets have got. Now we're going to get into handling. Three classic handling complaints. Number one is a right pull. Well, I've already discussed right pull, and I said I'm going to fix it with a rear end. Now, some guys want to correct it by changing the camber and the caster in the front end of the truck. The difficulty with that is that the beam used for the front axle is a tempered steel I beam, or it's a manufactured square tube. And both of them do not want you bending or twisting them. In fact, you avoid the warranty on them if you do. So I don't want to mess with that. Besides that, you have two steer tires that carry a total of 12,000 pounds, and they have no horsepower in them. You've got eight drive tires in the back that carry 34,000 pounds of weight and have between four and 600 horsepower in them. Guess who's in charge? The rear end. It's got all the weight and it's got all the horsepower. And until you get it pushing you the direction you want to go, you can play with the front end all day and at best you're going to band-aid it. You're not going to fix your problem. It's going to come from the rear. All right, so we've got a right pull as our first handling problem. Second most common handling complaint, Vibrations. If you go to page 8 of your handout, there's a graph here that shows the classic vibration ranges and what causes them. First thing you need to understand is there's two sources. You can get a vibration that comes up through your seat and your feet. Well, that's coming from the rear or the drive lines. If it's in the rear drive lines, it can be loose wheel bearings, it can be out around tires, it can be a bad recap, it can be pinion angles, it can be ride height, it can be a lot of things, but it's not alignment. 35 years of doing this, I've never fixed a rear end vibration with a line. The other vibration comes in through the steering wheel. Now that's the front end of the truck. In the front end of a truck with 22 and 24 five size tires, there are three classic vibrations that we see all the time. If the vibration starts below 40 miles an hour, that indicates an out of round tire. 
So I'll jack up the front end, spin it, find the outer round, and we can also teach you what causes outer rounds in front tires. There's three or four basic things. If you have a vibration that starts over 60 miles an hour in a steering wheel, that indicates a balance problem. Now it may be in the tire and rim, and if you have an off the truck balancer, it'll find it, but it may also be in the drum, which means you could balance the tire and rim and not solve your balance problem until you get into the drum and see what's wrong. The last speed range is between 40 and 60 miles an hour. Classic handling complaint, the guy complains that when he gets in the truck and he comes up through the gears, he gets to about 45, his steering wheel starts to twitch, he gets to 55, 58 and it quits. Now that is a classic toe out vibration. It's caused by the same toe that the alignment machine didn't find that was causing the toe wear. It's because you jack it up, you relax it, you put it on turn plates and you measure it. You need to measure it in its as driven condition to find this toe vibration. The last classic handling complaint is road wonder. The truck follows cracks, it hunts, it's squirrely, it's like there's no center in the steering gearbox. This again is typically tow out. So we have two classic tire wear problems, feathered wear and cupping wear. We have three classic handling complaints, right pull, vibrations, and road wonders. We can teach you how to find and fix all of these with the use of the ProTrack tool. The next step for us, if any of this sounds familiar to you and you want to go past this because your fleet could solve some of these problems or your repair shop could fix them for your customer, the next step is for us to go out to the shop, set up a machine, and show you how quickly and easily we can measure a truck. I'll see you out there.